Luke chapter 1 verses 46 through 56 And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. There is a lively thankfulness in Mary's hymn. Verses 46 through 49 are full of what God has done for her. We can scarcely enter into the full extent of feelings which a holy Jewess would experience on finding herself in Mary's position, but we should try to recollect them as we read Mary's repeated expressions of praise. We, too, shall do well to walk in Mary's steps and cultivate a thankful spirit. It has ever been a mark of God's most distinguished saints in every age. David in the Old Testament and Paul in the New are remarkable for their praise. We seldom read much of their writings without finding them blessing and praising God. Let us rise from our beds every morning with a deep conviction that we are debtors, and that every day we have more mercies than we deserve. Let us look around us every week as we travel through the world and see whether we have not much to thank God for. Well would it be if our prayers and supplications were more mingled with thanksgiving. 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It is evident that the Virgin Mary possessed an experimental acquaintance with God's former dealings with his people. Verses 50-55 through 55 trace the handiwork of Israel's covenant God in Old Testament history. The true Christian should always give close attention to Bible history. Such study throws light on God's mode of dealing with his people. He is of one mind. What he does for them and to them in time past, he is likely to do in times to come. Such study will teach us what to expect, check unwarrantable expectations, and encourage us when cast down. Such knowledge will make men patient and hopeful. The Virgin Mary had a clear grasp of Bible promises, verses 54 through 55. Let us learn to lay firm hold on Bible promises. We walk by faith, and this faith leans on promises. But on those promises we may lean confidently. They will bear all the weight we can lay on them. We shall find one day that God keeps his word, and that what he has spoken he will always in due time perform. For meditation, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Psalm chapter 37, verses 7 through 11.